The following video is going to talk about some storage devices such as a general hard disk drive, um, optical disk drive such as a CD-ROM, CDR, CDRW and also solid state drive. Uh, these are uh, some different storage devices that you need to know about for AQA computer science and so that's what we're going to address. Now a general hard disk drive is classed as a magnetic disk drive. It uses magnetism in order to store data on the disk. Now the disk itself is a circular platter and that's what we call it. It has two different surfaces. Now this is made of a non-ferrous type of metal or a plastic um, but it's coated in magnetic material uh, that can be magnetized or not. Basically the magnetism indicates whether there is a one stored there or whether there is a zero. Now a hard disk drive being magnetic can be affected by uh, electromagnetic waves and we're going to look shortly about how it's got moving parts and this can also affect therefore the reading and writing of data. Now a hard disk drive is said to be a random access device which means that it's direct access to different areas of that hard disk. Now a hard disk drive we often talk about the hard disk the disk is the actual platter in the middle and the drive is the mechanism. So inside a computer we will always call it a HDD or a hard disk drive. This incorporates both the platter and the actual mechanism for reading or writing that platter. So the platter itself, as I say, it's coated with emulsion of iron or cobalt oxide. This is the what looks like the metal, the hard disk. Now this acts as lots and lots of tiny magnets on the surface and those tiny magnets represent our zeros and ones depending upon their alignment. Binary data is recorded as tracks. Now actually on the surface of the disk if we were to look at that, e.g. in this diagram here, it looks like concentric rings and this could be the surface of the platter and each of these concentric rings is a different track. On them tracks these are also subdivided into sectors and here we can see in the middle that's subdivided into sectors. So data on our hard disk would be stored on a surface followed by its track followed by its sector. Now if we think in terms of um, us as human beings we live at a house down a street in a town and you could think of the tracks as being the streets the sectors as being the houses and the surface of the platter that's on the top surface or the bottom we need to indicate what town we're living in you'll notice on this diagram we've got the disk head known as the read write head now the read write head moves to the desired track so whenever we want to read some data or we want to write some data that read write head moves to the desired track it waits for the relevant sector to pass underneath it and then the data is read now it always reads a block at a time the whole sector is read or written each time now we talk about that disk that disk is said to move radially or the read write head sorry it moves radially this disk is forever rotating and the read write head moves radially and reads the data underneath it here we can see an example of the disk the movement of the read write head and the reason we talk about the moving radially as you can see there it's not in a straight line disk rotates so the key points from this, we've got magnetic storage, disk rotates, platter, tracks, sectors, blocks, a read write head, it moves radially, a block at a time, magnetism, which is associated with zeros and ones. As I say, read write head is a moving part. This is part of the drive mechanism. Therefore, this could cause us errors. Um, it could cause the data to become corrupt um, if there is movement on the drive or if it comes within a magnetic radiation.
A different type of storage drive is a solid state drive. Now solid state drive works differently. It doesn't have moving parts. It's not affected by magnetism. It's not affected by electromagnetic radiation. This is why we use solid state drives. We often use this as flash memory inside like a digital camera because we're, we are moving it around. It's the storage inside our mobile phones because there's movement in there. Very fast. Tends to have a much lower capacity and it's a lot more expensive per megabyte. So these are key features of solid state drive. But if we're looking about how they work on this screen now are some real key points about how they actually work. And a solid state drive uses what's called the NAND flash memory, NAND technology. This links in with what we looked at in terms of Boolean algebra and logic gates. Solid state drive also has a controller and that manages the pages and the blocks and also the complexities of reading and writing data onto our solid state drive. Now the solid state drive is made up of using floating gate transistors. And what this is, it's a type of transistor that does not lose its charge when the power is turned off. So it keeps its current state. That makes it non-volatile. If we think back in terms of RAM, RAM was volatile where once the power is gone, then it loses its charge. Well, this type of storage, we're not changing the magnetisms, but it's using transistors to store a charge. But when the power is gone, that charge is not lost. Now, the problem with solid state drives, we cannot overwrite the pages of information on it. What we have to do is re-erase the page first before we rewrite a page onto it. This means that we cannot read or write individual bits, but we must do it as pages that are in blocks. So we use this term pages, meaning um, a group of bits together, like a block of data. Our other type of disk is optical disk. So this features our CD-ROM, CDR, CRW, DVD-ROM, DVD-RW, DVD-R, Blu-ray. So it's a disk that makes use of a laser. Now on the surface of the disk, we can see here, we've got troughs and lands. And this is how data for a CDR and a CD-ROM is etched onto the disk. If we think about the operation of an optical disk for a CDR, a laser will read and it will write to the disk. A low intensity laser will be used to read data. And a high intensity data will be used to burn troughs in the disk surface and that is then what we talk about burning onto a disk. So this still has moving parts. The laser moves in and out, the disk rotates and the intensity of the laser is changed in order for read or write. With CD-ROM we can only read from the disk, CDR we can read and we can write once and this is why we can burn the troughs into the surface. Now a CDRW or Blu-ray RW, DVD RW, they work differently because we need to be able to read and write and do this several times. It's a rewritable disc and therefore instead of troughs and lands it makes use of a reflective surface. The type of laser interacts with the surface of the disc to change the reflectiveness of that and therefore it works with the material that the disc is made of so that you can actually turn it from reflective to non vice versa and this allows us to rewrite the data on there and this means it doesn't actually burn into the surface and the disc can be used again and again and again and whether the disc is reflective or not reflective indicates if it's a zero or a one. In summary then, we've looked at different storage devices. We've looked at our magnetic hard disk drive. We've looked at our solid state storage, which encompasses a solid state drive plus flash memory like your SD cards. And also looked at optical storage. Optical makes use of a laser to read and write data. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Thank you very much.